Global Brand Director uh, for Team Medicine for our battery electric vehicles, working together with Darren Palmer uh, on the end to end business, all the way from upfront strategy to product development and how we actually launch and communicate these vehicles. So it's a pleasure to have you guys here at Walking Through the Car today. So we, we, we just come back from LA uh, where we had the launch event because we wanted to come and share with you and show you first hand what we can see. In 2017, Jim Hatcher came on board as CEO, Jim Farley came back from Europe. And the electric car program in its current state was not accepted. Ford was going down the compliance path once again, sort of focused electric 2.0. And what we recognize is we really needed to begin to future proof our iconic brands. And this meant playing to our strengths, leveraging our best brands and building out family of vehicles around that. So with this vehicle, when we really went back into the customer, we, and above all, this had to be a must-have vehicle. This had to be a new hero. And with that, we wanted to really leverage our best strengths. Mustang, of course, is an icon. 55 years of history, 10 million vehicles on the road. And when you think back to 1964, when Mustang was launched right here at the World's Fair, on town and road in Queens, it was about the spirit of adventure, freedom of the open road, this idea of moving fast and free through life. This is what we wanted our electric vehicles to deliver. And this was finally the opportunity with technology we have between technology and cost coming down to a point that we could offer a, an attainable dream car. Given that this was a Mustang in summer 2017, we had to completely tear up the vehicle architecture that we had. We had begun life with, like many manufacturers, kind of shoehorning batteries into a car. At a certain point, the wheelbase had grown long enough to at least accommodate a big battery to get that 300 mile range. And Darren will touch on more on that later. But most importantly, when we said Mustang inspired and then eventually all the way into Mustang, we knew we needed premium proportions, and this meant a complete tear-up. So, starting with the nose, we know that the Mustang design is famous for that kind of fist punching through the air front end, a bit of that sharp nose, the scowling brow, that long, powerful hood, the very short front overhang, and what we always like to refer to as the dash to axle. You know, that gate pillar and that cabin set really far back. The really fast roof line was exceptionally important, and what you guys are going to be shocked about later is. Darren Palmer, my colleague and friend, who is six foot six on a bad day, I mean six <laughs> seven, uh, he can fit in the back seat of this vehicle. So this vehicle is incredibly accommodating. Uh, and then, of course, the powerful rear launch, the great stance, and the iconic Mustang details like the tri-bar lamp. So all of this really brings and modernizes the Mustang form. We also knew that while Mustang always has that brutish strength, this needed to be a more fluid and seductive and expressive vehicle. And our younger, newer customers want something that, that looks fast and fluid, and it plays in how they move through the world, right? So you'll see also because of aerodynamics, you know, this vehicle had to be very slippery. And you'll see some really interesting features, the fact that there are no visible door handles. Darren is going to walk you through that. Uh, but with that, needless to say, we're very, very proud of this vehicle. We're really excited about it. And this vehicle is that it was developed using human-centered design. You can say, what are you trying to, trying to do? And then what do I need to give you to make your life easier or better? But one of them is the door entry system. So we started with what type of door handle would you like? But again, that's the wrong question. The question is, what are you trying to do? Well, we're trying to get into the vehicle. So this vehicle, when you walk down the stairs on a Monday morning, coming to work, you've got your coffee and your laptop and your bag and your coat, and you want to get in. As you walk up to the vehicle, it detects you via the phone. It locks your profile, loads the profile into the car, and unlocks and opens the door automatically for you. And it's using a pusher system that pushes the door open. So now it's ready, it can't move back in, it's solid. The same system pushes the door open and will break ice, or break the seal on the door. That's that stickiness you feel when you put a traditional door handle. It breaks through that. And so that means you only need a small handle. We tried many, many different, people wanted one fluid motion effort. That's why the handle's small, because the door does all the work. You push it open, you just open here with your fingers. But that's why it does that system. So we're really proud of that system. That's just one example of how human-centered design leads you to a different approach, a different answer than you would in the past. You know, that are really important, though, is that this vehicle has the lowest center of gravity of all vehicles in the Ford portfolio, with the exception of our GT, as in the GT that raced at Le Mans, <laughs> so the $500,000 GT supercar, and the Ford Mustang Coupe. So the handling of this vehicle, the safety of this vehicle on the road, is going to be unparalleled for an SUV. And we're really excited about that. Only just now that the technology is available on battery density to get a vehicle with the performance that we've got with the current technology. And it has to be built ground up. So this vehicle has over 300 miles of real world range, that's EPA range. We have a power cell system that are very dense, very safe, 
and give that level of performance. And then you've got the drive performance. Our most powerful version is mid three seconds of the season. We must have put 400 people through our performance car and we've explained everything we've explained to you about it and it gets them to 40%. And then we put them in the car and in 30 seconds they, oh my God, I never realized. I, yeah, I should just tell you, I know, I just never, I, oh my God. That's the kind of feeling you get. That's what you get in the 4P premium. That's mid five seconds. In the mid three second GT, this is the level of performance that we're on Ferraris and Lamborghinis a few years ago. And this is a five door vehicle with passenger space. So, um, so we included a mode system where on Monday morning when you've got coffee in your hand, you can press a button and it takes the whole thing to syringe. The lighting, the sound, the steering, <coughs> the pedal mapping, and the acceleration because sometimes you need that chill. But on a Friday afternoon when you use work, you hit unbridled and it will give you the whole lot and I guarantee your heart will be up here by the time. Another thing I'll mention is the cluster. So um, we tested with many people and the driver wants their information at close hand. That's, that's not for everybody in the car. But that's it's a clear highlight. So the center screen is large and the cluster is smaller because that's just for information for the driver. But all the settings, all the control is all in the center, nice and clear. And this car has advanced features such as auto drive that it will come in and will load via software. And so with systems like this, they're called DAX, driver uh, 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 automation systems. And they uh, you have to be very careful control of that and very clear. And so that screen is also to control all of those systems so that people know very clearly is it in auto, who's driving, who's in charge, all of those things. That's why it's got that cluster. Also, it keeps the center clear. If you don't have a cluster, you have to put the information in the center and it holds it up. There's another reason we've got that there. And actually, along the way, we thought they would want it to be like a phone where you swipe it. But you don't. You only want that on the phone. You're staring at the phone. In a car, you're not staring at it. And so the question changed to, no, no, how can I make a system that helps you with your life? And how will it help you if he doesn't know you? And so the key part of the system is that it knows you. Before the car even, you even buy the car, before you even take delivery, the car, the system will know you. When you approach the system, it loads your profile into the car. And everything you do is trying to help you. So it's got machine intelligence. There's really only two things to learn to use the system. There's zero learning curve. There's no home button. There's no back button. So there's only two things, the car and you. And under you is all the things you do, your profile, if you're calling somebody, where you go, and all your stuff. Because part of the research we did said, uh, what do you want? Well, one person wants Spotify, one person wants Waze, someone else loves Google. So basically, everybody wants different things. You just want your stuff. And so the system has CarPlay, Android Auto, it also has, has device link which means it picks up apps that are on your phone. And then it has other apps that are native. And so you press your area and you get your stuff. It also has a window system. And the window system um, has things called dash cards. So the main area that you're using a lot of the time, as you interact with it, it's learning what you use and giving you more of that. So um, while you're on navigation, if you've used it recently, there'd be a card for your phone, and that card will have muting, calling key contacts, and opening and closing calls. If you've used um, music recently, you'll have a Spotify card, and that card will have next track, last track, select album, and so on. So you don't even have to come out of your main navigation to go to that card. And as you use it, the things you use will go to the top. And really, most people use about four things. Nav, music, phone, and maybe some EV information or something like that. And that stuff just appears. You, you can press to load a new one, load it, but if you don't use it much, it will sink away. So it readjusts all the time to you. And that's you know, the key input of that system. It starts with what you want to do, not with what shape is it is. And the first thing you want to do is where you put the phone. So you'll find a perfect place to put your phone. And when you put it there, it will charge. And it'll connect to the car wires, no wires. But also, many people have two phones these days. These need some work. For a reason. So there's a second place to put your phone. 
And that one has connected two sockets for every type of phone because the passenger actually doesn't want to put it there and leave it there because they're always picking it up and using it. So we learned that and that's why there's also cable um, ability there for that. And being a bed, you have a flat floor at the bottom. And so we, have, we were able to put a two-tier console that has storage space underneath that you can't see it when you're sat there. So the things you've got there are not being visible all the time and you see then you have a separate area which is covered in storage of slider and of course the cup holders. So again, even the console is designed very, very carefully. Oh, that's one more. Yeah, the front trunk. trunk. Yeah, the front trunk as well. So as you guys are aware, uh, a few of the manufacturers have benefited from the fact or taken advantage of the fact that there's no longer an engine block in the front end. Well, they've treated this like a normal truck in the sense that it's carpeted. What we've done is actually given you this rubberized finish. Why is that? We've actually put a drain in there. So as you can imagine, a couple of use cases, let's say you're hiking or it's snowy, it's a, a wet day, you have kids that play soccer, they have sweaty gear. Dump it in there, and when you get home, you can actually just post it off. You can put your food in there, it can be hot, it can be cold, you can fill it with ice and put your beverage of choice. So the front gate is warm. So there's a lot of things that we feel in terms of, again, real human-centered use cases that are going to make this vehicle, again, an even better part of your life. Yeah. So you uh, had mentioned that this vehicle has some things in it Correct. that your other Ford vehicles don't have. Uh, will those, some of these technologies and all then migrate to the rest of the Ford That's line? That's a very good question. So the way Team Edison have looked at these cars is uh, these electric cars will, will lead us into the future. So as we discover innovations and things that work for us, we would be looking to apply them to or, or more of our portfolio where appropriate. In fact, it worked the other way too. The luggage area came from one of our other vehicles. It's a brand new innovation. And that actually spurned the uh, use of the uh, automatic water drain on the front. That came from another car as well, the Puma we just launched. So they're inspiring each other. They're, the way we're organized as program teams and as core teams, and whenever we learn something, we share it around. So it's a good question. You can imagine we'd be looking to apply te technologies from this to our other. So when do your teams get together and share that information? Is that like a quarterly thing that you go, um, or does somebody go look over and see a drawing somewhere, and oh, oh we want that on our team? No, it's, it's a very transparent system. So the entire company's been reorganized into what they call a enterprise uh, product line management. So Team Medicine was the pilot for that, where we had a concentrated team of passionate experts to really tackle a problem. Now, all the businesses are built that way. They own end-to-end -end business. That has a leader, that's Jim Bombeck, and Jim Bombeck brings us all together and we share what we, we know and learn and look where we can apply it across the portfolio. So, so, but part of that is, so the team work out where to play, how to delight customers. Then the core engineering team actually does engineering. So the, our core team that have been working on many of our vehicles engineer the car in detail. They are organized cross-functional, so they're organized, the lock team is the same lock team for all the cars. So when they learn about locks for this car, they're already pre-informed for the next car. The next car comes and we look at the customer requirement and say, does this technology fit for that? But each time we don't ask anymore what type of door handle, we ask what do you want to do? And what does that customer want to do? And then they, in that, what informs the design? Another good example of sharing technology and innovation. So on the design side of the business, we've long been searching to do active aerodynamic surfaces. So active grill shutters is something that this, this is our first vehicle that features that. So instead of it being an active <coughs> shutter behind the grill, it's actually what we call the A surface, the style surface of the vehicle actually moves. So when the barrier needs additional cooling, those shutters will open, so it allows airflow. But we have the liquid cooled system that generally takes care of everything. Yeah, but really that's cool. an example where that will be put across many ICE vehicles because, again, it helps aerodynamic efficiency at speed when the car doesn't need as much cooling. Uh, kind of looks, you know when you're sitting in traffic, you need that, that greater airflow. It kind of looks cool when it's working. Yeah, too. it's pretty cool. <laughs> so they're open because the, uh, the uh, air is inside on the inside of the car. And we want our electrics to be a technology showcase, so we, they always take the high end. Um, and I mentioned later we'll, we'll do a software update for Autogro. I guess one thing I did forget to say is every single module in this car, the electronics modules, the cars have many, every single one can be updated over the air. And so our plan, the cars get better over time. Yeah. And the second thing, um, it has a thing called AB swap. That means when you choose an up, uh, update, it downloads to this piece of memory, and when you're ready, you stop press the button and it swaps. If it fails for any reason, it's just a it. It never, leave, it never leaves you in the middle of an update. It's, if you have a system that deletes and replaces, 
then if anything happens or goes wrong, there is no software to the car, and that means there's no car moving. So that's something we considered very important and we put into that car. I think that's uh, unique in vehicles at the moment. Updates will come from the company, which will be features, and of course bug fixes and things like this, just like your phone, so they come. You, you'll have control of when that applies, but you can download it in the background. You could say, ready, go, download, or schedule it, and it'll download, and then it'll apply when you want it to. You can sit at night and apply, or you can sit anytime. They do all your route planning. It has live map updates, so it will always have all the chargers on your route, where you need to stop, how many plugs are available, how long you need to stop. So you're going to be covered. Not to mention that most people don't drive more than 40 miles a day. So if you have 300 miles and you plug it in at night, you're going to have 300 miles tomorrow. In terms of fast charging, we've got a couple great solutions. So working with Electrify America, this vehicle is going to be able to do from 10% battery to 80% in just 45 minutes. Instead of you having to get into a whole load of knowledge about charging, just say, I want to go to Chicago. You can do it on your phone or in the car. And it'll say, good, here's the distance. You can not charge. You can actually make it without charging. Or you can stop here halfway and start. And if you do that for 20 minutes, you'll arrive with this much charge. But the car tells you what you need to do. and how much you have at the end. And, and if you say, oh, is there coffee there? Because I want a coffee stopping. You can check it, it'll tell you. Use live connected maps. So it'll tell you what to do. Then you go up to the premium series you can get, which has a large drive motor, a small drive motor, mid-range or long-range battery. And then the GT has the two large drive motors, and that's what gives you the prodigious torque. You've got 612 pounds, of feet, pounds of torque and 459 horsepower. Driving is believable. Yeah.